All right. Hey, good morning. This is going to be your live sit rep. It's 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. And it is 8-11, 2023. And we survived another week of tyranny. So <clears throat> without further ado, we'll hop over here to our board. Hey, if you would, and if you haven't done so, uh, check out BeReady123.com. That's BeReady123.com. If you are looking for anything from sat phones to uh, bivy sticks to portable power units. This is your one-stop shop. It is BeReady123.com. Uh, you can save up to 40% off right now, as well as get uh, many uh, tax credits that are available on certain units in here. But uh, these things are amazing. They have the power to keep everything running uh, in a power outage uh, for a while. And then on top of that, you got solar panels that come with most of these that you can get and uh, just a total turnkey package. Uh, but yeah, that's be ready. One, two, three.com be ready. One, two, three.com. And, or you can even hit that little uh, QR code right here in the middle of the screen anytime during this video, and it'll take you right there. So, all right, let's get into what's going on around the world. We jump over here to this side of it. Uh, this, I think, I don't know that I've ever seen six, R-135s over the United States at any given point, maybe four, uh, but notice uh, where they are. We've got this one that's running some, some routes here looking this way and this way. Remember, this is the aircraft that A, uh, has capabilities, depending on which variant of Air, uh, R-135, has capabilities to sniff nuclear content. Uh, it also has the capability to track an object the size of a soccer ball from 300 miles away. All right. Now, recent reports were telling us that there were actually uh, Wagner fighters down in Mexico, all right, down here. And so that may explain why we have had the R-135s that have been doing that little kind of uh, snake tongue looking approach here because they're looking down here in Mexico, probably tracking these guys long, long, long before the media ever really talked about it. So again, R-135s, notice this one down here towards Cuba. That's because you've got a presence in Cuba of China and Russia, all right? <clears throat> so let me do this. I'm going to back away, step away from it delicately. Let's uh, take away the existing traces and then get a total count. 175, a little light for today in terms of on-screen Keep in mind that I've already pulled 50 Tex 2s and 25 roughly T 38s. So that's about 75 aircraft that usually are in this area, a lot of congestion uh, that are gone. Now, let's look at the air refuelers. That tells us a different story. One will pop up. That is going to be Gordo 14. That's your doomsday plane. All right. That one is up too. So when you look at the R 135s as well as this, Starts to paint a picture. Now, only thing we need are a handful of E6s that would be up. And I don't see uh, any of those on my board at the moment. Okay. Now, remember, E6s are talking to your nukes. All right. Now, let's look at air refuelers 13 uh, Pegasus B767 200 air refuelers currently up. And then we get over here to the KC 135, 19 of those. So in addition to the uh, half a dozen R-135s that are up, we also have a with almost 33 right there. Yeah, let me see any DC-10s in the mix, uh, which is also an air refueler. One DC-10, so we'll just go ahead and add that to our quiver. But uh, yeah, that gets us right there. I mean, we're close to 35, which is a pretty high number. I uh, just noticed this one down here off the southern coast of California or right on the coast. There is an active red flag going on at Nellis Air Force Base that is pulling a lot of aircraft out over the water, but it doesn't stop there. We're going to look closer at that here in a minute as well. But uh, again, down here in this general area near New Orleans, uh, central United States, all the way down to the border. Notice this one, instead of being up a little further north, this is a little closer to Laughlin and to Del Rio, that general area. And then, again, off the East Coast out here over the water. That's going to be the U.S. from an air refueler perspective. And then let me jump over to Europe. We'll see what we've got happening. Uh, not too much going on there. We've got one that looks to be 
headed out over the water in the Atlantic. And uh, that's just off the coastline of uh, Portugal. So maybe heading over to Terceira Island. Maybe not. Yeah, you never know. Okay, let's do this. I want to show you the watch list right now. Check this out. Look out over the water area of Southern California. Three intel balloons over the water. Three over the same area. They That right there, there's... There's nothing happening that they're not seeing. I mean, they're they're picking up flying fish, right? Um, and then, of course, we've got a lot of other aircraft down in the area that look to be uh, survey flights. And uh, uh, there's a Q9 drone down there. Those are more surveys. That R135s that we were talking about just a minute ago that I showed you. Uh, let's see. Another R135. Then we get over here. Another R135 headed out towards, looks to be headed over the Dallas-Fort Worth area, kind of continuing in that region. Again, six of those are up currently right now, which is a pretty large amount. And then we got our usual NOAA birds. We're going to talk about weather modification here too, folks. Don't uh, don't think for a second we're not going to get into that piece of it. Again, R-135 down near Cuba, all right? This is... Um, most of these right here that you see are going to be survey planes. Again, they're starting to do survey flights. We're going to look at that further, and I'm going to show you a data point that's going to make your hair stand up on the back of your neck and your arms and maybe even your legs. All right. <clears throat> Over to Europe. Got your normal German mill intel balloons. They're like their NSA. We got the Brio 68 and then another survey plane. The Brio 68 is an intel bird. We'll look at the intel aircraft as well. Here in just a minute. And then those are going to be drones over Turkey as well as uh, an AWACS that is out over Turkey right now to a NATO AWACS. And then that's a Ruski. And you know what? The right over Saudi Arabia. Imagine that. If you saw the news that happened yesterday with this whole big breaking push for a peace deal in the Middle East, then... Uh, uh, you're not surprised to see the Russians over there right now, too, because they're going to try and broker their own little thing. And uh, Saudi is a lot more cozy with Russia than they are the United States right now. OK. All right. Let's talk intel. Notice again, same spot as the three intelligence balloons off the West Coast. And then we get over here to Georgia. And uh, just notice you got a little man in the middle turn right there. All right. Uh, playing um, basically airborne cell tower. Just think of it that way. So anybody's phones that are down below that are going to be connecting to that airplane. All right. And then more intel, again, around Kaliningrad, over the Baltic Sea region, as they try to figure out everything that the Russians are doing right now. And then, of course, all along that Moldova area, over Constanta, looking closely at Crimea, and then this one off of the shin bone of Italy, and then Israel. What's going on along Jordan and the Saudi border? And Israel, we know what's going on there. That's Hezbollah and Hamas doing their thing. So nothing really down in this general area. So let's move on. Let's talk surveys for a minute. And uh, this is where it's going to get interesting. We're at 190 last three days, so it has gone up uh, about 40 over the three-day span, we were hitting around 150. We hit a low spot, okay? But uh, just notice that they're continuing to look at rivers and roads and transitioning and getting secondary looks at objects. Why is this important? Well, if you're painting pictures of houses in 3D form and they're in boxes, imagine what you can do if you were to take, say, AI and uh, start to communicate with maybe 5G, right, or any other Wi-Fi signals that may be inside the house, and you can start to paint pictures. So check this out, because this one is going to definitely catch your attention, all right? All right, listen up. Well, what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router, and they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. 
real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. So what they did is they had um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. So what they did, what they did. Yeah, I played that twice just to make sure you, you didn't think, did I, did I hear that right? Yes, you heard that right. They are taking your Wi-Fi router now because that signal travels throughout the house, goes through walls, everything, and they're able to paint a picture of you and everybody in your family, your dogs, anything in the house with that and tell exactly where you are in the house real time, okay? <laughs> Let that sink in. So when we're watching these survey flights, you start to think, huh, what could they be doing? We've talked about the military capabilities of this. If they roll this out to a, to a law enforcement aspect of this, uh, <laughs> I mean, in terms of this capability, yeah, you, yeah, you're not going to be able to hide from anything or anybody. There's no spot in your house you can, you can squat down and basically or bunker down. Uh, they're going to know exactly where you are inside that house. So let that sink in. Okay, let's get over here to the Ruski side of things. <clears throat> and uh, just to show you where they have been traveling, they are now headed, uh, looks down to Crimea, which we haven't seen them fly into Crimea in uh, a very long time. And then uh, to the eastern side of Russia, up to, to St. Petersburg. And I don't see anything traveling down to Africa, at least nothing we are catching I'm sure they're there, all right? <clears throat> okay. Now let's talk drones, and then we're going to get into weather mod stuff, all right? Now this is uh, Los Angeles area, and then notice that little tick there. That's a British drone over Biggs Army Airfield, and then this one over the uh, Washington, D.C. area. All right. Over to Europe, just noticed some low-altitude drones that are near uh, or north of Hamburg, west of Hamburg, out over the water, and then looks to be kind of the Belgium area. Moved away from that pretty quickly. And then Malta, Turkey with their drones, <clears throat> and, and then, of course, this. This is probably Q4, Q9 that's busting out over the Black Sea. Notice the broken traces and uh, where that is going. And then this right here is how I drive cats crazy that are watching the show. I move that mouse around quite frequently. It, <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, let's do this. Let's talk weather modification for a minute. Get away from that tracker. Let's get over to this side of it. This is the current map. This is going to be NOAA or uh, NASA's science program. Uh, science program, pay close attention to that. Notice this one. It continues. It's at... Uh, which 19 minutes ago, just noticed the flight pattern. It looks like it's on ground taxiing from that um, airspeed. Three knots is pretty slow, even for a twin otter, okay? But um, it, this is pretty common place for them to do that kind of a search pattern out in this general area. We see this one do it a, a lot out over the water, and I'm not really sure. Uh, it's probably LIDAR, water-penetrating stuff. They could be doing a lot of different things low altitude stuff. So this isn't cloud seeding or anything like that from these guys, okay? Uh, it could be even security related. Now this one we get into, uh, you can see where it flew, right? Out here and then back. It landed uh, about 26 minutes ago <clears throat> and uh, it is on ground zero knots. So it's, it's not traveling anywhere. But let's get into the NASA side and let me just show you what these folks have been up to the last 30 days. Now, if you've been watching the weather, remember, we've got crazy flooding and all kinds of stuff up here in the Northeast going on right now. 
and it has been going on uh, while everybody down here is in the clam bake, right? It's just completely hot. And, uh, uh, but this side of the, of the U.S. has just been getting inundated with weather. Now, uh, a couple of data points for you. We're going to look at this. Uh, I'm going to show you the NASA flights. And when I say NASA, this is NOAA and the NASA in the name of science. All right. And we're just going to go through it. And uh, I'm going to talk to a couple things while you're watching this video as well. But uh, notice that uh, this is actually, uh, that's over Alaska. So that's up near uh, Anchorage, okay? And that's going to be NOAA. But you see nothing on the other map with it, with relation to them up there, okay? Notice this one. Remember the area we were watching the, the balloons and everything else down south, down towards Baja, right? What are they doing down there? I don't know. Um, and then we get... Over here, over Arizona, they're doing a lot of stuff. Southern Texas out towards the Gulf. Okay, last 30 days. Again, last 30 days. All right. And um, let me, uh, I'm going to leave this on loop. Okay, so we're going to go through that while I talk to a couple things. Again, Alaska. And then you get over the northeast and just look at the amount of traffic over the northern uh, northeastern side of the United States. Again, a little bit over Calgary. You get down to Southern California, um, you wonder why the skies are, are clouding up, right? A little spraying maybe, covering things, same thing here, covering the skies, maybe a little bit here, covering the skies, right? You're talking about chemtrails, okay? Um, and then look at this, because this is high altitude stuff, all right? Now, again, I'm going to let that uh, sink back in. Um while you watch that, just pay attention, okay? 1973, 1974, uh, there was a bill that was passed, S.3028, Weather Modification Regulation Act, by the 93rd Congress. The bill was introduced to regulate weather modification activities, and here's a summary. Licensing and permits, reporting requirements, weather modification information system, right? That's all NOAA. And then international weather modification modification control. So in other words, we need to monitor what our enemies are doing because this could be weaponized, all right? This was back in 73, folks. And then uh, there were some general provisions that were in there that basically, you know, said this is how we're going to go forward and um, just in general, funding, et cetera, okay? Now... In 2005, 2006, there was another bill that was passed called S.517, Weather Modification Research and Development Policy Authorization Act of 2005. That was done by the 109th Congress. This bill, uh, basically, and just give you a, the summary of it, okay? Establishment of a subcommittee, program goals, all right? How they're going to go forward? Now, that subcommittee, committee, had the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration, NOAA, that's who we're watching on the screen right now, and then National Science Foundation, NSF, and then NASA. You know who they are, okay? Program goals, the director is tasked to developing a plan for federal activities under the program. This plan will establish goals and priorities for a 10-year period, describe specific activities to achieve these goals, Identify relevant programs from federal agencies and estimate federal funding for research activities. And then it, it provides research areas, annual reports. They have to, 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 you know, basically come in and tell everybody what they've been doing. And then there's an advisory board, okay, and then support and cooperation. That's basically U.S. departments, agencies, et cetera. They all get research funds if they support all of this, right? Now, it doesn't stop there. 2023, Illinois, then this is just the state of Illinois, put together SB 0134, Weather Modification Act, and the bill was basically introduced to prohibit weather modification over the state of Illinois, okay? <clears throat> it defined seeding operations, okay? And, uh, and then it basically gave an effective date. Provisions would take effect immediately upon passage. Now, Here's where it gets interesting. The bill was filed by Senator Neil Anderson, January 24, 2023. It underwent a first reading on the same day and was then referred to assignments. 
On January 31st, 2023, it was assigned to an Environmental and uh, Conservation Committee, and then the bill was postponed by that committee on March 9th, 2023, and then on March 10th, it was re-referred to assignments as per Rule 39A. So they basically kicked the can and said, yeah, we're not going to let you stop this. So it has not stopped, clearly, because as we get into the United States and you see this aspect right here, uh, away from Florida, which pay attention to Florida, too, because that comes becomes critical, and the Caribbean. This <laughs> right here is what we were talking about three days ago, weather modification. Just notice the high-altitude operation, okay? You would think when we look at, the say, the surveys, for example, and you see that same kind of line, what you are seeing are them actually – at a lower altitude doing LIDAR data. This is a higher altitude, around 25,000 feet. This, in my opinion, they're either cloud seeding or they are chemtrailing. Now, the one that is to the very north there that we see, um, we talked about the other day, that was one of the aircraft that was actually seen spraying some kind of pink, pink substance, and somebody got a photo of it coming out of the aircraft. Don't know what it was, just a data point for you, because it's Friday. We like data points on Friday. But I wanted to point this out to you. This is the one, when you have Congress talking about setting up programs for weather modification, that is, in essence, them admitting that they are actually doing it. And two, when you start tracking the flights and you watch this and everybody's going, hey, they're chemtrailing, man. And, and uh, you know, the sky just went from, perfectly blue skies to all of a sudden it's hazy and covered up and we can't see anything. Yeah, they're pretty much uh, caught red-handed here, folks. All right, now it doesn't stop there. Let's jump over here to weather modification and notice off the Red Sea to the south of, uh, in, I guess, southwestern Saudi Arabia, they're doing weather, weather modification. Now, the ones that you're seeing right here, this is a company, Weather Modification LLC. Notice over Texas, they're starting to do it. This is the last three days. That is because, if you notice, we start to get some rain here in Texas. It's actually severe thunderstorms with hail. Uh, yeah, that would probably be why. And then this little dot there over North Dakota, and then up here, low altitude, back and forth, which I don't know that, depending on the altitude, could have been spraying mosquitoes. Uh, they, they do do that too, okay? Okay. That is your smoking gun. Like I said, these guys, uh, they tend to delete their flights. You can sometimes catch them and get a little bit of history, but when they're up to something, that flight will disappear and very hard to trace it after a little period of time, if not immediately. Again, I showed you they had activity up here. Notice they don't even show airplanes up here. All right. Again, data point. Now, you expect them and you see them out here messing around with hurricanes. Some of the data that I was reading about this activity in the 80s, they were actually trying to see if they could mess with the hurricanes, otherwise making them increase, making them decrease, uh, and then they stopped. I don't know why, but they stopped. And that was the military, by the way. Um, now, everything you're seeing, this is all federal government stuff, not the military aspect of it, okay? So um, we do know for a fact we were watching them when the atmospheric rivers were coming in wave after wave after wave into the United States earlier this year, about 12 of them in a row, I think it was, we did catch uh, NOAA and several others out here conducting experiments with, uh, with those waves. So makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? Okay, let's move on over to this news item. If you haven't seen it, speaking of craziness, look at this. Uh, these Maui fires, uh, the death toll is now hitting 55, and they say it's going to be a lot more than that. This is over on the west side of Maui, and uh, it's kind of an aerial shot, as you can see them flying over. the This particular area is actually very famous, a lot of restaurants and things along this strip in here, a little marina. So uh, just to get over here to this side of it, it's um, Lahana is, is actually, I mean, this is a, a pretty well- traveled, um, touristy area. 
this is the spot right here where all of it basically just completely got annihilated, right? And if you've seen pictures, it looks like Pearl Harbor. I mean, it is, it's insane how bad that was. Now, you get down a little further south, and that's where this area here, this is uh, Wailea side of the house. This is, you know, this is, you get Four Seasons and all the other really expensive um, hotels down here, all right? And then up here, this is Jaws for surfers out there. You guys know where that, that's located. That's a, a famous um, uh, surf spot, huge waves, all right? But um, that's up in this general area here. And uh, this is Hana, if you know the road to Hana, if you've ever been to Maui. So beautiful, absolutely beautiful place, really laid back, but extremely expensive. All right, get away from the map. Now, speaking of NOAA, NOAA raises predictions for active 2023 Atlantic uh, hurricane season. This is, um, they're saying now, they started out originally saying it's going to be a near normal to above normal. Now they're saying, and that was with the 60% confidence, uh, everybody is starting to say, hey, you can pretty much, uh, and this is where it gets kind of crazy. The outlook now predicts 14 to 21 storms, named storms, 6 to 11 hurricanes, and two to five major hurricanes. So those are like Cat 4, Cat 5 stuff, right? With a 70% confidence. Remember, the Atlantic is uh, hotter than a junkie spoon right now. So is the Caribbean. And, uh, and when you get into the Gulf, it is off the chains. And so um, they're saying that is going to basically impact. Anything gets in that Gulf of Mexico, uh, it's going to basically strengthen and, and, um, and be very powerful, Okay. So let's just look at the peak. If you're not familiar with this time of year, we're just getting into it about right here. This is your peak just after September. And so, uh, sorry, folks. Hang I apologize for that. It never fails. That's UPS. And uh, their timing is always good. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the peak. And uh, this is when they're saying this is it's, it's going to basically get really off of the chains over the next several weeks, and then it'll start to mellow out a little bit. But think about it. We don't really have too many hurricanes to date so far. Uh, we have some stuff in the Pacific. Uh, and if this is about to ramp up and hit the numbers that they were talking about, we, over the next three weeks, could see a lot of active hurricanes all at one time within the Atlantic as well as the Pacific. So anyway, there we are. All right, let's go over here to Flashbang, see where he is. He's headed to the beach this weekend. Looks like um, he came back from his travel out to Salt Lake and et cetera and uh, is headed to the beach, and uh, we don't really care. But uh, let's get away from him and talk about this grant, just fantastic government that we have in play today. This one is uh, the J6 committee destroyed records, videos, et cetera, and yeah, smoking gun. Um, that right there tells you just how corrupt they are when they are starting to destroy evidence. Yeah, this they're they're trying to just railroad Trump, and uh, they're taking away things that may help his case, which is criminal activity, folks. All right, now it doesn't just stop there. Let's talk about this piece of it. I don't know if you saw the headline that hit the other day, but. The United States is once again, just like we've been doing since uh, back in the Alan Dulles days, uh, State Department, uh, you had actually not just Alan, but his brother, both of the Dulles brothers, one in the head of the CIA and uh, the other uh, running the State Department. And between the two of them, they were running more programs, taking out more world leaders, disrupting more elections, uh, overthrows, everything, right? You may remember Alan Dulles was the guy that actually uh, basically <laughs> set up the Bay of Pigs and failed, and uh, that's what got him fired from the CIA after his he was the longest sitting uh, director of the CIA, and uh, that got him fired. And so um, that was JFK that fired him, by the way, okay? And so from that... Uh, he actually, JFK took the bullet for that one, literally, okay? But uh, for firing him, that's what got him the bullet. 
And uh, there is major speculation based on documents that have been recently released that that Dulles was actually the brains behind the assassination of JFK. Okay, so if that indeed is the case, remember too that Dulles was the guy that that headed up the Warren Commission and basically gave them all of their answers all the way through the entire thing. Now, mind you, that is the dude that did it, <laughs> and the guy that is now telling you how uh, somebody else did it. All right. Uh, again, case in point, you go back to this, you can see very, very capable uh, of our government to do such a thing, and uh, as well as just like they did with JFK, okay? All right, now, doesn't stop there. Like I said, this is the MO for our agencies, and uh, especially State Department and uh, the other alphabet soup companies, but they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar it, uh, this is a transcript, transcript that came out uh, that was from the State Department basically telling them that, uh, hey, you guys need to get rid of this guy. Um, and uh, it's, it, let me just kind of go back up to the top because that'll, that'll kind of walk you through uh, all of it. Here it is. Secret Pakistan cable documents U.S. pressure to remove this guy, uh, Imran Khan. And it says, all will be forgiven. That's coming from the U.S. diplomat. And uh, if the no confidence vote against him uh, secedes, and basically that is what has now happened. So, uh, yeah, as always, we have been caught this time. Uh, but we're always messing with other people's stuff. All right, let's get over here to this side of it. Here's your Bohica moment for Friday. Biden asked Congress for another thing. $13 billion in new Ukraine spending. So uh, please, somebody stop the insanity. This uh, this is our dollars that are just getting blown left, right, and center. Um, you know, think about how low our taxes could be if we didn't do this kind of thing. It's, it's just, this is criminal. It really is. All of it's criminal. Okay. Now, if it's not bad here in the U.S., Check this out. China is now facing a bigger debt crisis than Evergrande, and they're saying this is going to happen in under 30 days. So we are 30 days out from the next major, major deal. You're talking trillions. Uh, this firm actually holds $1.4 trillion or $199 billion of total liabilities. And that was at the end of last year, and they basically lapsed on the interest payment that was due. Uh, now, we saw the hiccup with Evergrande, and nobody really felt it. And somehow China was able to absorb that. But we saw China's economy start to really teeter-totter. This is almost the one-two blow for them. Going to be hard to see how they get out of this without it impacting the rest of the world, okay? Because this is global in nature, just like Evergrande. All right. Now, we've been talking a lot about this, this area out off of the southern coast of California, Keep in mind, there is a red flag that has been going on here that is pushing people out off the coast of California. I don't know that that, uh, that the NSA satellites that are out over the water have anything to do with that. And I don't know that the four F-22s that went supersonic at midnight out of Southern California have anything to do with that either. Uh, but there's definitely something going on out here in this general area. And we're not hearing much about it. Only thing we're seeing are indications from our intelligence community that there is something awry. Okay. All right. As I drive your cats crazy. Okay. Let's do uh, this. Is basically the weather coming in. If you're flying in these general areas, uh, it's going to be pretty bumpy. Okay. The rest of this stuff over the United States military exercises and boxes, operations. Uh, just notice you've got one out here over Havana. I mean, north of Havana, south of Florida. That has been there for a while. This seems to be where we, we were watching the subhunters uh, pop out and look around out over the Gulf of Mexico. So we probably have some U.S. assets out here protecting uh, this area. And then here we've got, uh, let's see, due to a mill something, altitude reservation. Yeah, they've got something going on out here, restricted airspace. Just today till 4 p.m. So whatever that is tied to. Again, pretty this is turbulence is what those yellow pieces are. 
All right. Notice who's really getting turbulent. Ukraine. This is pretty crazy. Uh, super duper. And that stuff right here that's got the darker colors are, are really pretty bad, severe weather. Same thing with this. Um, there is a major offensive going on right now on the Russian side of the house. We'll talk a little bit about that now as well. But uh, just you know, from a weather and from a, a no-tan perspective, the, the weather's new, but the rest of this is not. Um, this is what's really kind of strange is this weather just so happens to be over the area that, that the Ruskies are pushing in on right now. <laughs> what are the odds, right? And oh, by the way, it didn't, this weather modification stuff isn't just the United States. There is actually one company in Germany that I have found that is actually also doing it in Germany. All right. Okay. Ukraine sit uh, situation report. I started to say sit rep. U.S. boosting artillery shell production to over 80,000 rounds a month. Now, if you work for one of these companies, you have got overtime out the wazoo for the unforeseeable future. So somebody uh, in the manufacturing side is getting a lot of overtime and making a lot of money between now and whenever this war ends, which uh, who knows when that is. But here is your data point for Friday. Check this out. Despite sending Ukraine more than 2 million rounds of 155 Mike Mike artillery, and that's only 155 Mike Mike artillery, 2 million rounds. Remember, we borrowed uh, 500,000 rounds from South Korea. Let that sink in for a minute. Think of the money. This is insane. But the Pentagon is comfortable that it can supply Kiev and maintain U.S. stocks, which we know is hogwash because they've already said we've depleted. Uh, we, we, it's going to take us years to get to the number that we need to be because these, these guys are just basically shooting like a bunch of stormtroopers <laughs> and uh, just spraying and praying all over the si uh, the countryside. And remember, Russia, is it's a nine-to-one ratio. So for every one Russian that's being killed— there are nine Ukrainians that are dying, all right? So just keep that in mind. Again, this is uh, artillery manufacturing. That's a lot of rounds of just that particular type. And um, 80,000 rounds a month is insane. Now, the other day we were talking about the economy in the U.S. and how the manufacturing and the auto side had a little bit of an uptick. Um, and I said that's probably because there are, you know, we're manufacturing artillery and that is going to skew your manufacturing number. So that's the only reason why that number looks good. And it was marginal at best in terms. So that tells you without this, it's pretty bad. Okay. Okay. Poland doubles border guard on fears of Wagner fighters uh, infiltrating their country. And uh, they're saying that they've put an additional 2,000 troops along the border. Uh, again, we go back over here to the NOTAM. We dial it in a little bit. Uh, and uh, this border is where they are, they're worried, all right, all the way up. And so you can see they've got uh, a NOTAM all along their border. So, yeah, the Wagner boys are, are hanging out here. They're in Mexico. We've caught them in Africa. Uh, they are quite uh, worldwide, to say the least. All right, let's take a look at Biggs Army Airfield and see what kind of traffic we got for a Friday. Uh, I'm only seeing uh, this one coming inbound. That's Omni from, from uh, Fort Worth Alliance. Uh, from there, we've got uh, the Omni headed to Indy. Uh, that's Indianapolis. And then National Cargo headed over to Boise, Idaho, which is a 757-200. That's kind of a strange location for them to go. I haven't seen them do that yet. All right, so uh, troops... Probably, probably troop related. Okay, and then over to Dover. And uh, just notice you got a lot of 747s still in there. So we are sending artillery over uh, left, right, and center. Uh, just, uh, and I say that to Europe, uh, but uh, notice where they're coming in from. This one is a camber from Nantucket. That's, that's probably troops. Chicago O'Hare, JFK, and then Oscoda, Michigan. That's um, This is going to be a, probably a, an origination flight, so it's what they call deadhead. It's coming in without anything, any anybody but crew. 
Um, and that is because uh, that's their, for Coletta, that's going to be their operating hub. They're, they're based out of there. Their maintenance is up there. And it is god awful cold up there in the winter. But um, looks like that is just getting into service. And then we go here, where are they going from there? We've got an Atlas there headed to Ramstein. That other 747, probably Coletta, is headed to Ramstein. And then that one, one of them is headed to RZE Poland. All right, 747s, very large aircraft carrying probably artillery or, um, you know, could be some other stuff that shoots artillery. And then this one is headed up over to Norfolk. That's uh, Amerijet. Probably troops on that one. Okay, now let's look at Ramstein. We've got that one we just talked about from Dover and another one from Dover. So two 747s inbound from Dover. And then outbound, Coletta is headed probably, uh, there's no telling, destination unknown. Down a little further, C-17 for you. 740, or sorry, 777, 200. So we got one trip seven. It's outbound out of Ramstein headed to Baltimore, Washington, and another one to uh, Terra Sierra Island, all right, seven six seven three hundred. That's probably troops. They're probably stopping there for fuel, and then they'll they'll boogie on across. Okay, Ford Operating Base. This is RZE Poland, and um, you've got one inbound from Dover. We looked at that a minute ago. Head on down. See if we got anything else catches my eye. Seven forty seven from Anchorage. So that's probably going to be Western Global, and that's probably got. Um, you know, 155 Mike Mike artillery rounds on it. Then we go down a little further. You got this one coming in from Ohio. That's probably carrying, if I had to guess, like tanks, you know, that kind of thing, equipment. And then this one coming from Bangor, Maine, probably same thing. And then we go down outbound wise, National Cargo's headed to Al uh, Hatwa, uh, or sorry, Hata. Hata? Uh, yeah, Al Hata. Okay. Well, you know what really messes me up is when James pronounces something and then I try to do it. So it uh, just doesn't go well. Uh, all right. That's probably because that's his you know, native tongue. So anyway, NCR 747. So let's go down a little further, see if we've got anything else. Uh, looks to be that. All right. Camber flights. Holy smokes. Look at that board. Uh, we've got seven camber flights on the board. Six, seven, three hundreds, probably troops there. Troops here, triple seven, probably troops. Seven forty-seven, can probably stuff that goes boom and equipment. Uh, notice they're coming in or originating from Alaska. All of these destination unknowns, with the exception of that one, uh, headed to Catania, <clears throat> and then Western Global headed from Anchorage out here to Seoul, South Korea. Uh, well, let's take a look at what this is. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look at that. What in the world? That almost looks like a brain. That's weather. That is weird. I've never seen anything like that. Let me, <laughs> I'm speechless, folks. This is very, very odd. I've never seen weather look that red, that nasty. Um... And notice the little ripples in it. Man, that makes me think harp. That is nuts. So uh, I'm going to go back over to NOTAMs for a minute. Uh, I'm going to do a Dutch on you here because this is, uh, you know, every once in a while you catch something just makes you go, what, what, what am I looking at here? <clears throat> and I'm trying to see if there's a NOTAM be or a TFR below it. We've got a lot of boxes in this general area. But uh, normally, if you if you mouse over that, it would tell me it's a TFR, and it's not giving me that. Look at that, the line on that. It's just perfectly, yeah, that's strange. I don't even know what to think of that. But, uh, okay, notice this one. This is a Wagner coming from RZE Poland, and then the other one from Alaska, both headed into that Osan Air Base. All right. Nothing on the board for NATO. And then let's look at Omni. Looks like we've got just uh, one that's headed from Manchester to, to Toronto that's here. So the Canadians basically have a contract with them for moving stuff, charter services, troops. And then Sydney to Kadena down in Okinawa. So that's coming out of uh, Australia. 
headed northbound. All right. This is the Brits, and they look to be headed to the Middle East. And then this is going to be your immigrant machine. Take a gander at all the stuff down in the Central America, but also notice the stuff, regular flight back and forth from, uh, let's see, that's going to be Ontario, California to Greensboro, 737. And then this one looks to be headed to Jacksonville Naval Air Station from Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. And then one look here. Let's just take a gander. This is going to be Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. As we take a look at Sun Country, this is going to be your Uber for the Legal Eagles. Marijet, normal flights. These all, these right here, all normal. That N-17 is a new aircraft that's been um, kind of goes into the cycle, so to speak. They rotate these through a contractor. That is a nice little citation, 560, Lauderdale, back and forth. And then this one. Now we lost one that was on the board a minute ago. That was a Shark uh, 63, I think it was. And uh, it has gone. This is what they do. They basically delete the board. So you can't really go back and trace stuff. You got to catch it when it happens, which tells you they definitely are up to something, right? Okay, now listen, if you are over on Patreon, James and I have been doing some really cool stuff. This next one we're going to do, not this time, but the following time is going to be on weather modification. So this weekend for Saturday, if you're on Patreon or you're on Locals with James, we're going to be talking the second part to Gog Magog. So here is a teaser trailer for that. So check us out. Israel is Israel sitting, is on, sitting the on the largest natural gas reserve um, in the world, as is oil. And that is, as we watch the things going on with Nord Stream and we see how critical those commodities are to Europe and to the folks that are kind of in those nations of Gog, Magog, that makes perfect sense yep. as to why they would be coming after the spoils, so to speak. When we talk about like Sheba, Deden, when we talk about like the nations that are going to end up basically saying, hey, what the heck is wrong with you? What are you doing, Russia and all of the other people? You just think Saudi Arabia and a good portion of the Gulf nations that are with Saudi Arabia, that's going to be in essence, those that object and they're gonna object, but they're not gonna act on it. So when we start looking at the nations that aren't mentioned and we start looking at the nations that will voice objections, but not really do anything, you gather the fact that Israel's not going to be able to defend herself and no. the international community is just gonna let this attack happen. Correct. They're not going to see as much of a hostile bent that they have towards Russia, as much of aversion that they have towards Putin and everything that's going on there. Understand what the Bible is telling us. Nobody is going to defend the economic interests of Israel. God could have made Israel any size. He could have made it as big as Russia. He could have made it as big as Russia and China combined if he wanted to, you know. That's right. But he didn't. He made them small. And it, that becomes more and more powerful when it comes to God's defending this country, because given the size of Israel and, and who they defeat, goes to show you how mighty our God is. The fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 has to be completed, which we're not completely seeing that until that attack begins to take place. And one of the other things that we have to know is Israel will have at this point enjoyed this real peaceful economic a state they, they will at this point have been very secure and they're moving very quickly in that direction so when all of these begins to happen it's going to be crazy and israel is going to find themselves in that place where they're like oh my goodness what are we going to do this is really interesting in terms of timing and how it's all coming together all right so there's your preview we're going to finish out on ezekiel 38 um, hey, if you haven't watched the news cycle, there that just started to to break loose is uh, this. They're saying this is the stage for the peace deal of all peace deals, and that is with Saudi and uh, Israel. They're getting together, and the Saudis are saying they are going to recognize Israel as a state, and that uh, they are talking about letting them have the Temple Mount. So this is some crazy craziness that is on the cusp of happening. And that peace deal, if it is the peace deal that we have all been waiting for, that's Daniel 9.27, uh, look out. It's about to get real. 
All right, listen, that's going to do it for today, folks. You guys uh, keep that powder dry and stay frosty because, man, things, they are changing rapidly, and um, uh, they are starting to set their eyes on us, folks. All right, that's it. Be safe. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. Check out the latest gear and products over at monkeyworksus.com.